The Fitbit Versa 2 looks a lot like the Versa 1, redesigned and loaded with amazing new features to make this watch compete with almost every other smartwatch in the industry. This watch has an 8-day battery life, comes with Amazon's Alexa Smart Assistant built in, comes in at under $200 and has a 1.4-inch AMOLED touchscreen. After wearing this watch for 11 days, I realized that there is a lot more to this watch than what is shown on the box. There are some very big pros and some very big cons that could easily sway you to buy or not buy this watch, and without watching this video, you may not know what these are. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike O'Brien, and like I said, this video is all about the Fitbit Versa 2, which I've been wearing for 11 days now, and I wanna share with you my experience and the pros and cons of this watch before you buy it. So I wanna start off just by showing you guys a quick tour of this device. So if you just look at the front there, you have a 1.4 inch AMOLED screen. This is a really nice screen, it's very bright in the daylight. It's also very dim at night, so it is very useful in every situation. I haven't had an experience where I couldn't see the watch. And behind the face there, there is actually an ambient light detection sensor. So what you can do is if it's you know in bright daylight, it automatically goes brighter. In dimmer settings, it automatically dims down. Really nice so you don't have to, like some watches where you have to go in and change the brightness all the time. So it's nice that it does that automatically. So this watch does have a faster processor than the Fitbit Versa 1, and you'll notice that the aesthetics on this, while there is still a large bezel, it is smaller than it was before, and this watch generally is not too thick. You don't really notice it on your wrist. It's very comfortable, and it is sort of like an Apple aesthetic there. So they have the rectangular look, unlike a lot of other watches, and they have the rounded corners. So this is similar in aesthetic to the previous watches made by Fitbit, but I really do like this one better. So they have five different colors and two special editions. I'll pop those up on the screen right there so you can look at those. Then when you flip it over on the back, you'll see just a couple things there is really pretty simple. So, you know, as like most other uh, fitness tracking watches like this, you have the heart rate sensor right there. That's pretty standard. Then we also have the four little pins up there, the four little nodes, I mean, and that is for charging. So one sort of downfall to this watch is that it does not have wireless charging. While it kind of is wireless, um, it's not like the wireless induction charging that you're used to. Instead, you have to put it in there and it just goes up against those little pogo pins and that's how it charges. Then you'll also see that you can switch the bands. There are many other bands you can get for this watch. And of course, on the right side there, we have a microphone. The microphone is used for Amazon Alexa. And I'll test that out and show you guys a lot about that later on in the video. And then of course, on the left side, or it could be on the right side, depending on which way you have this oriented, is just the button. This button is utilized essentially as your power on button. It will be, if you press and hold it, it'll activate Alexa, or you can press it to go home or back in the watch. So nice to have a button right there. I wish they had a few more functions for this similar to like the Galaxy Watch Active where the buttons do a lot of different things but nonetheless you have a simple design here for a very intuitive smartwatch. So just a quick aside, if you're new here and have not yet subscribed to my channel, but you're interested in finding out more about similar watches to this one, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button and the bell icon. I'll be reviewing the Galaxy Watch Active 2 next. So next I want to get into the watch interface real quick, give you guys a brief tour of that before getting into the pros and cons. And you'll notice right away that I have a, a different watch face than maybe you might have seen on the box or something. And that's because there are dozens, maybe hundreds of watch faces, and you can customize almost all of them to do whatever you want. There's one with like bitmojis on them. There's some that are like this one that tell you a lot of information. So there's tons of different watch faces you can choose from. Uh, and I'll show you those later on in the app. Now this one right here reads out like the, you know, how many steps I took today, which I will say is not actually that accurate. That's a drawback that I'll talk more about later. Then it also tells me my heart rate. It tells me, you know, how many like active points I have in a day or whatever. And it tells me the battery of the watch. So I like having that. And if I tap on the top corner, you can change the color or the aesthetic of this one. Then you'll notice if you swipe from the left to the right, nothing actually happens. That would be nice if they utilized that. I'm not really sure why they didn't utilize that. If you swipe up from the bottom, it gives you just your basic like today's statistics. So it tells you again, how many steps you took. You can go swipe through and see how many floors you went up, how many miles you walked or kilometers, whatever. Now going back to home, pressing the button, you can go swipe down from the top. And this is where you have your notifications. You can clear them all. You can do whatever you want and reply to notifications. So if we just tap on one notification, you can either mark it as red, you can reply, you can open it, or you can just clear it and get rid of it. So a lot of options there. If you swipe down again, this is pretty cool. This is where you get your quick settings. So you can control your music right here. You can go to Fitbit Pay, which is the middle one right there. So you do actually have that on this. The Fitbit Versa 1 did not have Fitbit Pay unless you got the premium one, from my understanding. And so this coming on all of the devices is actually really nice. Then if we go on the right there, you have your quick settings. 
So it's kind of weird, you have to swipe down twice and then tap on that to get to quick settings. Seems like it's not that quick to get there, but regardless, these settings are pretty useful. You can go into like night mode, you can turn off like auto wake when you lift it up, you can change the brightness, change always on display, or go into do not disturb. So just a few quick options there. I, I use those a lot, I really do like that. Then as we swipe across, this is where you start to see all of your different apps. So for example, you have the exercises, and if we go and check those out, I think there's only about five or six on here right now, so not a ton of exercises. I wish I could have more on here at once, but regardless, you can really get by with five or six. There's a general workout one, which kind of encapsulates anything else you're trying to do. Then you have like alarms and timer and Spotify. Unfortunately, one caveat with Spotify, so good that it came on this one. Uh, that's definitely a big upgrade to have Spotify controls on here. Of course, you do need Spotify Premium to use the controls remotely from your watch, but you can't actually go downloading songs from Spotify on here at this time, at the time making this video. So maybe they'll release an update. So as we go across, you also have some other things like music controls, you have your settings here, you have relax, you have weather, and then if you are a female, there is female tracking on this watch. I'm not sure if that's something you manually input or if that is like something that uses your pulse. I, I'm sorry guys, I don't know how to, I didn't test that. So if you did, comment down below and let me know if that works. I would, I would really appreciate that. Then of course, going across, you can download other apps on here. So there's some cool ones. There's like Starbucks and uh, Pandora and Deezer. I don't know if you guys listen to that. And then there's also some games you can download, some simple games. So that's basically everything for this interface. You'll notice that this watch does not have nearly as much going on as maybe like these Samsung watches or the Google Wear OS one. So like the new Fossil Gen 5 I reviewed, they can do a lot more, but at the same time, they are more complicated. So if you're somebody looking for a sort of simpler, more intuitive watch, this one is definitely a very intuitive watch and I do like that. So that's the interface there, getting into the pros and the cons. So Amazon Alexa, I'll test it out right now to show you. I think that's a pro that it has it, but you'll notice that it is a little bit slow. Sometimes it just says thinking. So if we test it out right now, remind me to go for a jog at 6 p.m. tomorrow. So Alexa can do a lot of things. You can actually turn on and off like smart devices in your home, control like, you know, Amazon devices. You can do a lot, basically anything you do with Alexa on your phone. It is just a little remote right here to talk to your watch. The heart rate is inaccurate again. Every now and then this happens. My heart rate right now is 72 measured on my pulse. And this says I'm well over 100. So clearly that's not correct. Going down, some other things. I think it's great for watch faces. That's a big pro there. Uh, you have a lot of different watch faces and they really utilize all the corners of the screen very well. And speaking of the screen, I think having a rectangular screen may be beneficial. Although, personally, I'm more of a fan of the aesthetic of a round screen just because it's a more classic watch look. But having the rectangular screen, you know, it is kind of nice because it mimics a phone a little bit closer. So the apps are a little smoother. The keyboards and things like that are a lot smoother. Speaking of keyboards, this watch unfortunately does not have a keyboard. So when you reply to text messages that come in as notifications, you will have to either do voice replies or a few quick replies that you typed up on your phone or some emojis. Another pro on this watch, there is custom training if you wanna have the subscription for Fitbit. So in the app, I'll show you later on, you can subscribe to set, you know, set up some custom training or, uh, programs for you. Some other pros, the eight day battery is absolutely uncontested in my opinion by almost every other smartwatch out there. This also has sleep tracking built in, so you do have your sleep score, which is really nice, tells you how well you slept one day compared to the next with a single number, which I think is a lot easier to interpret than having you know to analyze how many hours of REM versus deep versus light sleep you had. So coming up with a number is very convenient. This has Fitbit Pay, it's water resistant. Those are both really great features of this watch. Uh, and you can download up to 300 songs with the onboard memory. So that's also great if you're trying to listen offline with some Bluetooth earbuds. That's pretty great if you're going for a run with this watch. But I will say if you're running with this watch, you can't use GPS because it only uses connected GPS. So that's a little bit of a logic inconsistency there where they make it convenient to run without your phone by having music on here but then you can't use GPS, which is honestly the only really accurate way to track your runs. A pedometer, you may be off by as much as like 10%. So if you're running five miles, you could be off by half a mile very easily. And I've had it off by even more than that before. So I don't know, I wish Fitbit really did have a GPS on this. I don't know, that's just me though. So another drawback is the lack of a speaker on here, which sort of limits you to about half of the Alexa experience where you talk to Alexa, but she can't read anything back to you. Instead, you just have to read whatever's shown on the screen. And likewise, you can answer calls from here. You can't make calls from here, of course, but 
it is going to be essentially just answering for your phone and then you have to talk on your actual phone or if you have like Bluetooth earbuds or something, you can talk on those. So going into the Fitbit app here, you'll see that there are, you know, three tabs on the bottom. I only use the middle one because it really just tells you your analytics and that's what I care most about here. And in the analytics, you'll see that some of the things are limited and you have to pay for premium. So I mentioned before that you have the custom, uh, you know, workout programs or, you know, fitness programs that you have to pay for premium to get, but there are other limitations. So if you got a sleep score, for example, you can go down and it tells you, you know, a lot about your sleep for today and yesterday and other days, and it gives you your score. But if you actually go into the sleep analytics, you'll see that in order to see your sleeping heart rate or your restlessness, you do have to pay for premium. That's not really something I like. I wish that they just had that there. It seems like extra information that would be fairly easy just to put there if you paid $200 for a watch. But regardless, that's what they want you to do. So otherwise, the graphs are fairly useful. I like having them. And one other thing is the pedometer is very inaccurate. It's not reliable to track how many steps you took in a day because while it might be accurate while you're walking, it's very inaccurate when you're not walking. So if you're typing or you know eating food or whatever you're doing, it's registering a lot of steps. So it's really not good at distinguishing what is a step and what is not a step. Any kind of motion will be tracking steps on here. So it always overestimates how many steps you take in a day. I will also say that the auto tracking on here, so it should, it says it should be able to track your exercises, your walks, your runs. I haven't had it do that very well. And when it did, it doesn't really show up as a workout that you can go and check and track. So that's a feature that definitely lacks on here, the auto tracking. But regardless, these are your analytics right here. And the next thing I want to show you guys, if you go up to tap on your face right there, um, so just see your profile, you can actually go and tap on your device. And this is where you can kind of customize a few things. You can connect to Alexa, you can choose different watch faces. So you get, they call them clock faces, same thing. And you can go over and you'll see right here that there's like a Bitmoji one. There's tons of other ones you can choose from. Then you can choose different apps and choose them all from here and put them on your watch. Uh, there's, like I said, about 450 apps. Some of them are useful, some of them are games, some of them are not really great apps, but regardless, there's plenty to choose from. Then we also have media right there, which is where you can you know, put songs on uh, your, your personal music on the watch. That's nice. And then there's also wallet. You can connect your phone uh, or your, your credit card to the watch if you wanted to do Fitbit Pay. So I think that's everything I wanted to tell you guys about the Fitbit Versa 2. If you are interested in having something that's a little bit cheaper that may compare to this one, I would recommend checking out some of the cheaper bands. So I reviewed like the Inspire, I reviewed the Galaxy Fit and the Mi Band. I'll link those down below or up there. So they're more like $100 or as low as $40. They can do kind of similar things. If you want more features than this, I recommend checking out the Galaxy Watch Active or the Galaxy Watch Active 2. Again, I'll link those down below. But somewhere in the middle, sort of a happy medium, $200 is more affordable than some like the Apple Watch and this is a simple intuitive design. I really like how easy it is to use and how you know if you're somebody that doesn't want to do too much with your watch, you just want to track your fitness, you want a slightly bigger screen, this is a good watch for that. It also has a nice aesthetic. The eight day battery is again uncontested, that's amazing. And Amazon Alexa on here seems to be fairly useful. So guys, let me know what you think of this watch down below in the comment section. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.